Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We have another walk around for you. This is an old 5JD2, serial number 5J1113, which would make it a late 1938, first model year that they uh, produced them. And this one's been sitting here for a while. It's uh, down here in uh, Arden Hills, Minnesota, right in the big city. At least it's the big city for this old country boy. And uh, my father purchased this one. So we're looking at uh, taking it out of here and hauling it home. Like, like I say, it's been sitting here for a while. Pony motor's not on it, but we do have that. Um, unfortunately, it has froze and cracked. You can see the cylinder head is heaved up there. And we've also got a crack down here behind the injection pump. But it's, uh, it's got a lot of very good parts on it yet. Very good radiator with good lettering intact front grille is nice and clean no dents it's got the 12 inch wide track pads on it sprockets are fair rail height is worn down to about 100 percent wear but it's got the original uh, rock guards down on the bottoms of the tracks yet fenders look very good and the seat tank is not dented or caved in even as some of the old stenciling on it there's the dash. So anyway, we're going to start getting this uncovered, see what it's going to take to get it moved. on the fender here. I've never seen one there before. Some kind of a bracket for some sort of upright, maybe an umbrella or something. I'd say it's an umbrella you could use in the farm. It's definitely been sitting for a while. All the needles that have built up. Fuel shut off valve still has the little handle on it. Okay, so we've uncovered it a bit. The rest of the seat tank looks good on the bottom. Steering clutch levers are a ways back. But they do both move and have some spring to them, which is encouraging. I'm really hoping the clutches aren't stuck. Brake pedals really don't show any wear. And they both do move. We got main clutches stuck. They've just had this little board over the where the cover used to go, and it's very rusty in there. So main clutch is stuck engaged, and we're in fourth gear. That might be an issue. If I can't get this freed up, I might have to go in and see if I can free up that, or uh, disconnect the interlock, roll that interlock out of the way so I can at least get it out of gear. From the pony motor being off and the old tarp deteriorated, the pinion clutch housing is full of water. And that's pretty well seized. But uh, another indicator, this is an early build. We don't have a grease fetting in the cap here for the pivot shaft. Rather, it's inboard underneath where the track tent cover would be. That's why they had that little round hole in some of the early ones. Just giving everything a good look over right now. So it's got the old tall bypass style early oil filter on it. Like I mentioned before, patent tag is on the fender on this one. It's a location I've never seen them before. Another kind of interesting bracket. I think it was like maybe for an overhead umbrella for the operator. Kind of a mystery deal on the fender there. We've also got what looks like a push blade arrangement that was being fabricated here. It's being held up by this chain right now. Some pretty stout looking brackets on the track frame on each side. Looks like maybe they had a uh, mount set up for a hydraulic cylinder at one time. I don't know. We're going to have to see maybe about 
removing this to try and get it on a trailer. Okay, so we've gotten down to her a little more. Got those uh, push brackets off the front that were sticking out here. That was just a couple bolts on each side, and luckily they came right off. Um, next order of business is going to be trying to get this out of gear, and I can't, I can't make the main clutch move. It's pretty well seized up in there. Nothing even wiggles. So what I think I'm going to do is try and take these two bolts out down here. Probably hard to see. There's uh, something to point with. There's two bolts down here I can take out. This is the linkage here that goes to the interlock that keeps you uh, locked into or out of gear whenever the main clutch is engaged. So if I can get those loose, roll that linkage forward. Let's see. Anyway, move the linkage enough, roll that interlock, hopefully we can get this thing freed up. Another indicator of an early, early tractor also, as long as we're here, there's no access cover for adjusting the uh, pinion latches. So another indicator that this is a really, really early machine. Okay, I've got those two bolts out of there, and you can see with the linkage in the position that it's in, we're pretty well locked in gear. So if I take this with it loose now, rotate it back. Yep, there we go. We're in neutral. One little success at a time. Okay, so we tied off to the track frames on each side, hooked up to our little winch here, tied off to the tree. We're about to see if it's going to move. Well, we got it this far up out of its resting place, and it's uh, parked on a couple of planks now. And uh, it did roll. It was pretty stiff at first, and we had a couple of links here that were kind of uh, stuck to, but uh, every roller is rolling except for this one right here. So I really can't uh, complain about that too much. And the little winch did pretty well, tied off to this great big tree. We had to part the line in a couple spots, but with the assistance of the jack, we were able to get it moved. Trouble now is uh, gaining access to get it out from behind this garage. We're kind of blocked that way, and we're kind of blocked the other way. So until we can gain some access and some other things get moved, this is really about all we can do with this for now. So we'll probably just uh, unhook the winch, cover it up, and return it another time. Okay, uncovered, we have the tracks greased. And this is just a test. I really hope it rolls with the truck. If it rolls with the truck, it would make this day so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> 